Of the two main parties in Nairobi, the first candidate to arrive at the Kasarani Stadium for the IABC nomination was the incumbent Dr. Evans Kidero and his running mate Jonathan Mweke. All their papers seemed to be in order and in no time they had been cleared to defend the seat. Jubilee's Mike Sonko came in later on in the afternoon and was also soon cleared. Both have promised to lead peaceful campaigns and uphold the rule of law. Kidero is facing an uphill task running against Sonko, the Nairobi senator who has accused him of ineptitude and corruption. I want Governor Kidero to tell Nairobians, to tell Kenyans, what has he done with the billions which were allocated to the Nairobi county government by the national government through the exchequer. I want the governor to tell us what has he done to the billions he's been collecting from Nairobians, from Nairobi taxpayers. What has he done? The Kidero team, however, is confident of a second term, saying they have improved the lives of Nairobians. The scorecard is there, it's, uh, it's clear. Any mother in Nairobi who's been able to take their child to school through our bursary program, who otherwise would not have gone to school, uh, is able to tell you their story. Uh, the businesses that are now able to open until midnight because we have put street lights and the Mamamboga goes home with an extra 200 shillings in the pocket, are able to tell you the story. Uh, the ECD classes that we have built around the city, the mother who would lose their lives on a wheelbarrow from Dandora to Pumwani to give birth, now goes to Dandora Health Center where the governor and I have put a new maternity wing. There's one in Mutwini, another one in Bagathi. Now babies are not being lost anymore and mothers are healthy. And those will be able to tell you the story of how we've been able to touch the lives of Nairobians. Kidero himself accuses Sonko of not doing much for the county while a senator. He says the senator has never tried to defend Nairobi, nor pressured the national government to release the 72 billion shillings it owes the county. And if you look at the contributions, I do not think he even made a single contribution when he was in the Senate. So if he could not manage the Senate, how, what makes him think he can manage being governor? I've been raising corruption cases even immediately I was sworn in as the senator for Nairobi County. I've been debating in Senate, I've been bringing these matters before the Senate. I've even uh, taken the governor to court. I even uh, uh, wrote to the DPP. We've got response from the DPP. So we were a little bit surprised by uh, the current CEO of Kenya when uh, he endorsed uh, uh, somebody who by all means and by any means uh, would not fit the bill of being hired. And I want to assure all big businesses, medium-sized businesses, small businesses, the end of your troubles has come once you vote us in on August 8th. The three other candidates cleared today are Michael Mutinda, who is vying for the seat on a Nagano party ticket. Another candidate is Lawrence Kamau of the Party of Democratic Unity and Godfrey Waweru Wanyoike, who is an independent candidate. On the IEBC are 12 candidates, including former Speaker and Kenya Power Chairman Kenneth Manende. Those who were not cleared today include one John Bugwa, who did not have all the documents, and independent candidate Miguna Miguna, whose list of supporters was in wrong format. Independent candidate Peter Kenneth will present his papers tomorrow for the nominations. All candidates have until tomorrow 4 p.m. to get clearance. The battle lines have now formally been drawn as the race on who will become the city's next CEO officially begins. Will either of the two candidates really win this ticket or will any of the others come in between them? Andrew Ochien, NTV.